Bury Football Club. They were thrown out. They were thrown out. They were thrown out. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Dead and Bunny. I'm your host, Captain FM, and welcome on board to my football manager, Save. We are doing a long-term one with the Phoenix Club, that is AFC Bunny Bunny AFC, whichever way you want to talk about, whichever one way you want to put it round there, we're doing it with them. And we are now into season number four, ladies and gentlemen, and we have seen three promotions back-to-back to, back to take us from the North West Counties all the way now to the Vanaramas. We're in the Vanarama North. We've started the season. We've had a decent start as well. We've had a summer. We've got some players that have gone and some players that have come in. And I'm going to show you in this episode today. And then we're going to play just the one game against Kettering, who are sitting third in the table. We are currently second in the table. That just gives you an indicator on how good a start we've had already. Right, let's get straight onto it. Check out... The ins and outs. Well, Rooney retired, Jermaine Defoe retired, Nathaniel Knight Percival retired. So three players that we lost, three, not four, three players that we lost that were pretty much starting eleven. Nathaniel Knight Percival was a backup, but Defoe, 20 goals a season, only signed for us halfway through the year. Wayne Rooney only played a handful of games, injury stricken half of season for us. But he did score the penalty. That got us promoted, and that will go down in history. And, yeah, what we've done in this episode, well, what we're doing so far, is that we are going to not change the squad dramatically, because we've got the quality already. We're just filling those little gaps where players are needed. And this, ladies and gentlemen, we have filled the gaps in this summer, I believe. Let's go through the outs to start with. And as you can see, we haven't got any outs that have gone to the club basically they've gone and been released so the like i said jermaine defoe who is currently now a coach wayne rooney has retired from all football he's not even a coach these days well it's saying he's a coach what the hell's going off and nathaniel knight percival has also retired like i said but then we've got rid of darren carson and harry bridge if you don't know who they are it doesn't matter Right, let's go straight on to the ins then. Well, we needed a backup goalkeeper, and we've got that with Vizeles Gunelles. That's the one, and that's what we're sticking with. We've picked him up, a Greek under-21 international. He was on the books at Chelsea's youth. He didn't get released by the 23s. He got released from the under, what is it, the under-19s that you have in the team. So... Not he never really got any didn't get a sniff getting anywhere near the first team, but he's got the quality to be a backup. And um, if you've got three stars in this division, then you are good enough to be in the league above. Vanarama national level, they're saying, potentially to be a Sky Bet League two goalkeeper in the future. And he's our backup. So if we did lose Yaros, injury, suspension, or something like that, then this bloke is gonna be able to come straight in and he's gonna do a decent job for us. Welcome to the club, Mr. Vasiles. Gunelas. Yes. We've signed two players with the same surname, so we're going for the Thompson brothers. And the first brother is Dylan Thompson, who is a real player. He's 19 years of age on the game, and we've picked him up from Everton, where, again, he was released, but this time by the under-23. So he got close to the first team squad, but just didn't make the grade. But he's going to play for us, and he's going to be our starting centre-back. Matt McGuinness did an absolutely fantastic job for us last season, but he didn't develop into the player that I wanted, and I wanted someone that was just a little bit more determined to get us through the leagues. And with 16 determination and a personality of fairly determined, and just pretty much decent all-round central defensive attributions, I think we've got a decent lad here, and he's started very well for us. 7.90 after three games and one goal. Welcome to the club, Mr. Dylan Thompson. The second Thompson brother is Daryl, and unfortunately we picked him up and he's changed his personality from when we had him on a trial with us. And he's gone into unambitious, which is not great to say that we like to have ambitious players and determined players to get to the next level. So we'll just see how he develops. It might change. He's only 18 years of age. His personality can change. And we picked him up from Manchester City, another player that didn't actually make it to the under-23s. 
he was developed he was released from the under 19 squad so never got a sniff of going anywhere but when i got him on trial there was other players that my assistant was saying you should go for this player and i just something drew myself to him and i think it was his bravery at 17 and a ball winning midfielder so not scared about getting himself stuck in and getting himself around and i'm very very happy to have him on board and have him as part of my team he will be starting in the center midfield with harry henry lansbury welcome to club mr daryl thompson the thompson brothers after losing jermaine defoe we needed a striker and i went and looked at our local <laughs> neighbours and it was Manchester United as you can see we've taken Manchester City players and we've taken Manchester United players now and the Manchester United player is Mr Graham Dodds who hit the ground running for us three goals in two appearances 11 in six in pre-season every time we played a pre-season game I kept looking and thinking wow this player is very 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 good personality fairly professional enthusiastic striker is the media prediction very much like that free star credibility free star potential ability even if he only gets us through these next two leagues and then he starts to wither the way at league two level he would have done us a job at this moment in time he's twisted an ankle so he's out for the next two weeks and we're not going to see him today which is very very unfortunate but i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen this blow could be the real deal really the real deal welcome to call of mr graham dodds and last but not least, we needed a right midfielder and we just needed a bit of experience, I think, as well. While well, saying that, we just couldn't get anyone in that was any good. And this was the best player that we could bring in. Two and a half star current ability, two and a half star potential ability. David Worrell, he has been here, there and everywhere around the North West. And he also had a little stint at South End and at Millwall as well. But he has been everywhere, started his career off at Bury, which I didn't actually realise. <laughs> and he played many times for Bury. Wow. Okay, this is the old Bury. I've taken over the old Bury on the game. That's why it comes up as AFC Bury. But he actually played for Bury, and now he's back at the Phoenix Club. So he has done the full circle. He's come all the way back to us. And I did not see that before. When I signed him, he's been at the club for three games. He's been at the club all summer, and I did not see it. Well... I'm, just, uh, I'm very happy to have you on board, David. Brilliant. Welcome to the club. Fantastic stuff. I never really show you the season preview, but I just want to show you this one because we are being predicted to come straight top of the table. So I'm expecting a promotion challenge from us. The other teams around us, obviously, York City, Stockport, they're the big teams in the league. They've just been relegated, so the, but they're, they're expected to come below us. So it's it's a crazy time. I wasn't expecting us to be predicted to come top. In the lower leagues, I've been predicted it and I've been like, yeah, I'm expecting that. But for this one, very, very, very surprised that we've been chucked straight in there as top dogs, predicted top dogs. Let's just see how the season pans out. And this is how things have been going since the start of the year. Obviously, preseason went very, very well for us. We didn't play many. Big, we didn't play a single big team, to be completely honest with you. So, I wasn't actually wondering for sure if it was a reflection on how we were going to perform. And then we went and played Gateshead in our first game of the season, and we won by six goals to one away from home. And I thought, wow, we are pretty decent then. And Graham does got a hat trick on his debut. That's why I'm talking about him being something else in this league. Dylan Thompson got a goal on his debut. Graham Dodds, Hattrick, like I said, Josh Appiah and Illiman and Dai, the lads from previous years, all on the score sheet for a 6-1 victory. Outstanding stuff. We followed that up with our first home game of the season and it was a 4-0 thrashing of Staley Bridge and look how many yellow cards they got, which was crazy. Graham Dodds did get injured in this game. It was by a tackle as well, which was disgusting. I did have a bit of a beef with their manager afterwards and I was not happy. Anyway, we won by four goals tonight. It was a great performance from us. Dal started in this match, got the win, uh, got the first goal. Stefan O'Connor after 13 minutes. Josh Appiah made it 3-0 before the break and then he scored again on the 62nd minute to complete the route. And then we just played South Shields. We went 1-0 up after 30 seconds through Sebastian Nabala, but they scored on the 30th minute and then the game just kind of became a bit of a, dub, uh, um, a, a, bit of a poor one, to be fair. It, no one really looked like they were going to score and it just finished 1-1. And that leads us to where we are today. We're going to be playing Kettering. They are third in the league. It's going to be a strong game. And Kettering, obviously, I mean, I'm not sure if they're any good or not. But they are predicted to come up and around the top end of the table. So I'm expecting a challenge. 
Right, here we go. First game of the season. Well, not our first game, but first game on camera. Kettering at home. Their manager is Paul Cox. No idea who that is. They've started off pretty well. Same points as us. So, like I said, it's just going to be a challenge, this one. Big one. Right, this is the starting eleven, and we are missing Sebastian Nibala. He's out injured, and Graham Dodds, obviously, as I mentioned before, is also out injured. So this is going to be what it looks like. Yaros in goal, O'Connell, O'Connor, and Dylan Thompson at the back. We've got Worrell, Lansbury, and Daryl Thompson in the midfield. Attacking left side of midfield is Dow, and then we're going to play Illiman Undai behind Josh Appiah and Rob Arker up top. We're staying attacking, even though we're away from home today. Oh, no, we're actually at home. So, yeah, we're going to stay attacking. Our possession stays the same. In transition stays the same. And our possession stays the same. We've played that tactic for the last couple of years now, and it has worked a treat. Why change anything? The only changes that we do have in this uh, league is that we go from seven subs down to five, which is just bloody rubbish. Right, so this, they're going for a 4-4-2. Is there anyone from their team that stands out and played at a higher level? This lad. Romario Vieira, once upon a time of Leeds United. That's the only one that really sticks out for me. I don't really know anyone else. Got to go to the Oops, who's got another contract for another year. Did a fantastic job for us last year, and my uh, director of football has given him one. So I'm happy to keep him on board. He always gives a good team talk, and he's done a half decent job there. I'm just going to come in nice and calmly and say to the lads that I've got faith in them, and they bloody love it. Look at that motivation. Outstanding. Right, first out of the game, and it comes to us, and Dai puts it in there. Thompson with the header. And I think that was Dylan Thompson, the centre-half, who scored once already this season, and this time sticks it over the top of the bar. There's a highlight, but it's deep in their half here. And Ketu and I are going to try and come away with it. We are pressing, so we will stick on that. Dylan Thompson does really well, wins the header. And Dai now, playing just behind the striker. He's going to play as that. He's playing at the moment as a uh, shadow striker, and I don't know whether to change it up or leave him where as it is. We'll leave it as it is for now. Lansbury to Illiman and Dai. Tackled by Vieira, but he wins it back. Gives it to Thompson. Thompson to Dal. Dal back to Dylan Thompson. Uh, Daryl Thompson, shall I say, to Dal. I'll get him right in the end. I might actually just uh, put their names as Daryl and Dylan. Lovely pass from Daryl, though, this time. And, oh, Dal hits the side netter with his left boot. Another highlight. A highlight to go also so far. 12 minutes gone. Third highlight of the game already. And Kettering have it this time. They tried to do a suicide pass there and it's a terrible one. And it's Josh Appiah who just skins his man. Oh, and White in goal makes the save. And it goes out for a corner. Can we capitalise still? Appiah with the corner. Sticks it in there. Who's going to get there? They edit away. So Connor, is he going to go for a strike? He does, but it's a bit of a tamed effort. And the keeper picks that up very, very easily. Good start from us, though. Positive. Another highlight for us, 26 minutes in, uh, and die, and there's Hockenhill, but he was always going backwards, he headed it towards goal, and it's just over the bar, but again, we are the ones that are pressing, and here we go, Yaros, starts it early, back to Hockenhill, back to Yaros, he's going to go for the easy pass to Dylan Thompson, and it finds a way to Daryl Thompson, and Thompson now he's got space in front of him, he's going to find the right pass, does he, he finds Rob Arker, and Arker, can he get the ball into the box, he does, He's headed away. Sang then clears it. Can Daryl Thompson get on it? The ball winning midfielder and he does. Picks it up. Gives it to Henry Lansbury. Lansbury, the best player in the league, according to the bookmakers. Finds the pass. Can he find the right one? He gives it back to Daryl Thompson. Back to Lansbury. Who finds Dow with a fantastic pass and he's shoved it, putting it away. And the keeper makes the save. And we're looking good. We're finding holes in their defence with players like Lansbury all day long finding those key passes. And he finds another one there to Thompson. And it's uh, David Worrell now coming forward. And he puts the ball down the line to Appiah. Appiah, can he get the ball into the box? He does. The keeper kind of drops it. And there's Dal to just dip it in there. Dip it in there. Just tap it in there with his edge, shall I say. The keeper came and made a mess of it. And Burry take the lead here against Kettering. And I'm just going to say it has been coming for some time since the beginning of the game. Keeper coming. I'm not sure what that was all about. Dal's there with the header. And it ends up in the back of the net. They haven't brought many fans to him today. Doesn't matter. It's 1-0 to us. And we are off and running. Oh, another highlight straight away, though. We're going top of the table at this moment in time as well from this uh, from this win. And we're going to win this back if we, if we can. No, we don't. Thompson was kind of running in sand for a second there. Vieira pumps the ball forward. They do win the edit. Allison goes for the strike. But it was always going wide. Time's ticking away, yeah. I think we're going to go into the break with this 1-0 lead. And we do. And it's been a great performance from us so far. We just want to keep this up and don't let our performance slip. And that's what... Hoops has said to them, he knows that we're even be uh, capable of even better. It is Kettering on the ball here, and here comes Sinclair Smith, and Worrell does well as a defense. He's, he's down as a defensive winger, so I'm expecting him to be good. 
at those defensive duties. But it is Kettery still on the attack here. It's a good block from us. And do we jump on it? We do. Uh, Lansbury finds Dal on the left-hand side. And Dal is coming forward now. Can he find the right pass? He does. Josh Appier to make it too big. Save from the keeper once again. And even though the keeper was at fault for the goal, he has been outstanding for him for the rest of the game. And he's kept him out so many times. And Dai goes in for the header, but it's going to come out all the way for a goal uh, for a throw-in. And we've just been knocked off the top by York City. They're obviously winning in their game. And we are sitting in second at the moment. The ball goes all the way through to Allison. No big tackle from Thompson. I'm not sure if that was Dylan or Darrell. 1-1. One, one. They've hit us. Sucker punch, I will say. I'm not saying that they don't deserve it. But I'm also saying that they don't deserve it. Um, Paul, they allowed him to get the cross back in and there was no defenders. That's what happens when you got three at the back sometimes. If two of them get pulled away, you've only got one left. And that time, we only had one left. Um, no need to panic. We're fine. It's just we need to get a goal to get back in front here. And that might have just been a bit of a sucker punch for us. 60 minutes on the clock. I'm just looking at a couple of lads. And dies on a 6.4 behind the strikers. And Kettering have got their tails up here. Big chance. And O'Connor gets it out for a corner. Wow. I think that was a big save from my goalkeeper as well. I think we are going to make a sub because things are just going a little bit pear-shaped for us at the moment. Got to get in there. Thompson with the header away. Does well. Sinclair Smith. And here comes Davey now. Is he going to get the shot in? No. Thompson wins it away. And we can break here. Appiah. Over the top for Rob Arker. Arker's done absolutely nothing in this game so far. Big tackle from Vieira. And that's going to be the end of the highlight surely. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring Ndai off, who's on a 6.4, and we're going to bring on Rafael Garcia. What we're going to do is we're going to move Dal over into that shadow striker role, and Garcia can play on the left-hand side. David Warrell's on a 6.3 as well, so we're going to get fellow Asgard on to the pitch. We're going to move him up to a winger, which he is more suitable playing. And that's the only two changes we're going to make at this moment in time. I have shouted on some encouragement as well to see if it can do anything. Hopefully these substitutions can make a difference for us. But can they? There's only 15 minutes to go. We haven't really done much. Here comes Henry Lansbury though. Puts the ball into the box. Hockenhaus there with the header. And it's a fantastic header. Now we've got to hold on. We've got to hold on for this lead now. It's a massive lead for us. Like I said, these are right up there in the league with us. And if we're going to get promotion into the Vanarama National Leagues, then we need to win games like this today. And that is an absolutely humongous goal for us. Do I say anything to lads or do we just try and hold on here? I think what we'll do is we'll just try and hold on. We are still attacking, which is a bit mental. But ah, uh, normally I do change things. Do we just hold on or I think we're going to have to shout on a bit of concentration to the lads and try and maybe come down from attacking. The ball comes, going to come into the box here. Big tackle from Lansbury. Ball in there. There it is. There's the goal. Ah, oh, should it have stayed on attacking? What was I thinking? I've got to get out the mindset as well of that when we were playing in the lower leagues, we could just see games out willy nilly, and this time we're gonna get we're gonna get hit on the break. We're gonna get hit if we don't react quickly enough, and this time we didn't. And he fires it to the back of the net, and it's J uh, Zach Alsop who gets that goal. But there is still time, I suppose, and can we somehow push and get a winner here? Oh, are we going to get absolutely taken to the cleaners here? No, Darwin's here back there. And here comes Josh Appier and he beats his man. Josh Appier, can he put us in front? No, he was never going to do it. He's been like that all day long. In front of goal, he's never going to score in a million years today. He's got to get a corner in though and it's Appier that's going to get it in. Can we equalise it? Can we go in front? Oh, there was the chance. 24 shots we've had today. 12 on target and we're going to walk away with another 2-2 draw. This was the same... In the last game against South Shields, saying that here comes Dal and he's turning, he's beating his man. Dal goes for the strike and it was always going away from goal. 2 2 it's going to look like, or is it? Are these even going to punish us even more? Can we win the ball back? It doesn't look like it. They're playing it amongst themselves. Ball goes over the top. Romario Vieira hits the post. They're going to put it in. We're going to lose 3 2 here. Ah, oh, that's a killer. That is an absolute killer. 3-2, defeat. Wow. 
Welcome to the Vanarama Leagues, ladies and gentlemen. We're not just going to be able to run through these, are we? Ah, disappointing. I am disappointed. We had so many shots on goal, so many clear-cut opportunities. We should have been winning that game. Poor. Right, there is confirmation of the 3-2 defeat to Kettering. We should have shut up shop. That's my fault. Got to learn. Got to learn as the manager. I've got to learn that we've got to come off attacking when when we're in front we've got to try and hold on and just grind out victories or we're never going to go up oh by the way look how crazy their player system is yep <laughs> mental stuff right where are we going to come back next um so i'm actually thinking about getting some games right under our belt here and i'm thinking about coming back in october for the game against darlington there we're away from home. They're, they're actually not having the best time in the world at the moment. But I think if we play some of the more notable teams that people know and people love, then I think we'll get through this. So I think get through the rest of August, the rest of September, and then come back for that Darlington game. It will be absolutely amazing. And we'll be right into the season by then. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it amongst family and friends. Also, I just want to give a massive shout out to you, the viewers. If you are new, if you are old, then... Thank you very much for spending time with me and watching my videos in the past couple of weeks. It's been a crazy time. We all know what's going on in the world. But for you just to spend 20, 30 minutes out of your day to come and spend it with me. And uh, I mean, I'm just I'm just really appreciated of it. I really, really am. Also appreciated of the fat lads over on Passion for FM who are supporting my videos for Football Manager 20 this year. I'm going to be back for another episode of Dead and Bury, the rise of AFC Bury in a couple of days time and I will see you there. Bye bye.